Hello, everyone. Welcome to another fun edition of Grand Rounds in Urology, but we're in the wellness section, which is by far and away the greatest section in all of Grand Rounds in Urology, <laughs> where we have the most fun. It's the most informative in my mind. And I'm bringing along one of my friends who I've been on the circuit with for about 25 years, Dr. Tia Agano, who has been, her name has been a part of almost every major trial I can think of. I'm not going to go through her bio. She's been practicing clinical oncology, mostly prostate cancer, as long as anybody out there. And so I don't, I don't know how many decades you've been doing this, but I'm going to say you're very seasoned and needs no introduction. So I thought I would bring her on for something that a lot of people might not realize with her. It's called ADT and cognitive health. That's what I'm going to title it. Cognitive health and ADT. I think people are extremely confused by it. So we brought Tia Higano along in a very short period of time to help us figure out this entire puzzle because I don't think anyone's figured it out. So welcome, Dr. Higano. I appreciate it. And I just want to tell you what makes me really wacky about this. Journal of Urology 2018, meta-analysis. We don't think it affects cognitive impairment or doesn't cause cognitive impairment, ADT. 2021, Journal of Urology, meta-analysis. Meta we think it does possibly cause problems. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> all I'm saying is, will you take us, people don't realize, you've been doing work in this area with some of your colleagues since going back to early 2000. And I went over your last seven papers. Think about that, seven papers in cognitive health and ADT. Can you give us a summary of where we are, where we were and where we are right now? Sure, I, I'll do my best. But I, I will say that like many things, I first became aware that there could be an issue about this um, cognition and ADT in the context of doing trials with intermittent hormone therapy, usually in guys with biochemical relapse. But, you know, they, 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 they the patients themselves and commonly their spouses would notice differences in their cognitive abilities. At least that's how, you know, that's how they described it whether they were on or off of ADT. And frequently after, you know, X number of months off of ADT, their sort of fog would go away. <laughs> so um, I, I uh, met a woman at the University of Washington, a PhD who was doing research in um, testosterone and cognition. She was based at the VA at the time. And we started talking and I said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm in a situation where I'm turning testosterone on and off in these guys. Would you want to help me study that? And so that's what we first did um, in our very first paper that was, as you said, from 2003. We looked at um, the effects of ADT on, on formally tested cognition. Now, the important thing in, in that paper and actually papers going forward, you know, when you look at the papers, you really need to understand if the patient's cognitive function was tested before they ever started the treatment. Mm. And that, it, that was a big lesson. I mean, you know, that I, I learned from working with uh, Monique Cherrier is a PhD. And she, you know, said, you know, you have to understand because these, these men are, you know, average age in the mid to late sixties and they're Many of them already may have some issues. So that's what we did. We did pre-ADT um, cognitive testing, a whole battery that she had used in her other studies. And um, then we looked at their fu function at the end of nine months of ADT. And so early on, what we found was nothing, nothing terribly dramatic, but there were changes. There were there were some oddly enough improvements in verbal abilities, but um, more importantly, um, there was an impact on spatial memory. So that's sort of what you use when you need to find your car in the parking lot. <laughs> you don't have to come out of uh, Walmart or whatever. So um, that, you know, we, we published that data but we, you know, there were other things that came up as time went on, like, well, maybe, maybe some of the impact on cognition has to do with mood, because we do know that many times men on ADT, you know, have 
you know, some feelings of enhanced um, sadness, depression, however you want to term it. And so we, we did show that mood was affected. So that was formally studied, not just, you know, by, by the patient or spouse's history. Um, and then we thought because uh, the technology was uh, coming across that could look at um, functional brain imaging, we decided to look at, um, first of all, areas of the brain that would light up, um, you know, either before starting hormone therapy or, or after. Um, and what, what areas of the brain correlated with different, you know, cognitive um, abilities. And so that was interesting because we, we did see that certain areas of the brain lit up differently after starting ADT. And in fact, you know, those are areas of the brain that do have to do with some spatial abilities and so on, but also early changes that can be indicative of early Alzheimer's disease. Mm. Then what we did was we did this kind of cool thing where we put guys underneath um, a, a functional brain imaging with um, virtual reality glasses. And we asked them to do face, spatial um, tasks. So they were shown, uh, let's say, a, a, a scene in, uh, in a town square. And there were different landmarks all around. And then um, they, the landmarks would be shuffled and the virtual reality glasses would go back on. And they had to tell you what was different. Um, but the reason we had virtual reality glasses is because they're lying underneath the scanner. And meanwhile, the scanner is doing, you know, functional imaging. So that, that was interesting because it then also, you know, demonstrated an impact on especially spatial memory. Um, so, you know, over time, I think what we've, sh what we showed with, with these studies is there is an impact of ADT um, on, on certain um, realms of cognition, but, you know, it's, it's not extremely dramatic, at least, mm. you know, in our, after nine months of ADT, it hasn't been extremely dramatic. Um, but I think, you know, the studies that you mentioned at the outset just show where we're at. <laughs> yeah. We've got some saying, yes, definitely. We've got some saying no, definitely. And, and now we even have a paper saying it's associated with dementia and Alzheimer's, never mind cognitive dysfunction, but right. dementia. And um, I, gosh, I, I feel at this point like th this reminds me of the whole uh, does ADT cause, you know, cardiac problems? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it's the same thing. The data is conflicting. Um, you know, there's no good long-term prospective trials. And certainly this would have to be a huge long-term trial. Um, but I think, I think the answer is probably more like, well, you know, ADT probably does uh, impact cognition, especially for some men who maybe already were on the way there. Yeah, I mean, sure. we do have to remember that, you know, one in 10 men over age 55 are going to end up with dementia at some point. And so I think that makes it really, really difficult to study this and say one way or the other. But I think it's just the awareness that, you know, it can affect cognition. It can affect cardiovascular disease. So that's how I've sort of rounded out my thinking on this. So then where are we? Everybody gets uh, besides they get an MMS, MMSE or a mini mental status <laughs> exam or you know, does, or does everybody get some kind of baseline? Do they have to come in now before ADT and get some kind of baseline um, assessment? Or how do you advise people watching this then with all of these papers suggesting something cognitive could or could not happen? So I, I think that, um, you know, it's interesting that you asked that because that's exactly kind of what was recommended in this um recent journal of urology paper 
um, by the UCSF group um, looking at the capture data. I mean, they said, you know, yes, maybe everybody should have neuropsychological testing before starting ADT. And uh, I, I think it's kind of like doing um, genetic counseling for everybody on whom you get a genetic test on. No, I, I don't think that's necessary. Yeah. Um, I think if you, if you take a history and you're talking to this guy and you know you, you see beside the guy, the wife is rolling her eyes when he's answering and you wonder about the guy's cognition, sure. That's a time, for, first of all, to have to say, gee, you know, for some men, um, you know, ADT, you know, might cause some cognitive issues. It's been studied. It's not clear. But I mean, really, even, even in this recent paper I mentioned from UCSF, it was, it was 2.3%. Mm. I mean, it's not, it's not like it's a huge amount. And there, there's actually a very nice editorial comment that goes along with that paper um, that was written by Dr. Alibhai, I think it's pronounced in Toronto, um, suggesting, you know, let, let's not go overboard here. I mean, it, it's worth saying that perhaps there might be a 1% absolute increase in risk over a, a seven to 10 year period. Yeah. But I don't, as he says in his editorial comment, I don't think we're ever going to know the answer for sure. Yeah, but I think, you know, bringing up the possibility that there could be an increased risk, that, that's a one sentence conversation. And then, I, you know what I find really interesting? I went back through all the data on what can, I want to lower my dementia risk, right? So yeah. I looked at some of the top, the top theories of what lowers dementia risk, because there's also these mild cognitive impairment, all these people have mild cognitive impairment, they don't, it's not normal, and it's not Alzheimer's is sort of in between. Mm -hmm. Here's some of the recommendations. They may sound familiar to you. Manage, <laughs> blo manage blood pressure, control cholesterol, check. reduce check. blood sugar, check. exercise, check. eat a <laughs> diet check. that has high, high quality diet because they're working work in the Mediterranean <laughs> diet and others. Lose weight. These are, these are, I'm not, I'm laughing with you because the reality is this goes back to the cardiac thing you mentioned that virtually everything that's good for your heart is good for your brain health. So yeah. why can't we simplify that and tell patients that, look, I want you to reduce your cardiac risk to as close to zero as possible, and that will keep you as brain healthy as possible. Yes, and heart healthy. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. But, no. but I don't I don't want to give, before we leave here, because I'm already over by a minute, I also want for the audience, because you did work on this, there is also work going on this with the novel anti-androgens. Yes. There is concern that a couple of the novel anti-androgens cross the blood-brain barrier and can do certain things, right? Yes. And you have written about this. So can we finish up today by saying that, what's your comment on these novel anti-androgens? Because we just saw another paper that suggested one or two of them could increase the risk of cognitive problems also. So be careful of these novel anti-androgens. So what say you? Yeah, so I think anybody who's worked with these drugs, especially in the context of some of the clinical trials, you know, could could verify, um, you know, these at least the anecdotal observations that patients do report some issues with cognition, some issues. Well, I mean, I remember very distinctly a patient said that when he was on enzalutamide, he had very bizarre dreams. Mm. And, you know, but um, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the one, the one um, you know, new hormonal agent that doesn't cross the drug blood brain barrier is darylutamide. And that's because it has a very different structure from the other second generation anti-androgens. Um, it, it does not cross the blood brain barrier. And presumably that's, you know, what's causing these CNS effects. Yeah. But I do, I do think we should, you know, think of this when we're using these drugs. I mean, we, we think of ADT, but basically these are like super ADTs, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. All of these drugs. And so I, I definitely think it's important and, and I, I will take into consideration, for example, if I'm going to be starting one of those drugs in an 85 year old, I'm probably going to pick darylutamide. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's that's really interesting, and that goes back because because there was a couple of editorials written. You know, 
all ADTs aren't created equal. There's all these different types of things going on that have to be considered. And, and that leads me to the end of this, which is every time we have a debate on someone understands, I don't know ultimately if it increases the risk of dementia, maybe a little bit, maybe some, but there's even a trial going on in New York of women who go basically on ADT who have Alzheimer's to see if it can slow Alzheimer's. And the reason they're, the reason they're studying it and even D'Amico had a paper that showed a lower risk of death from Alzheimer's in some of ADT subset patients. There's a philosophy that if you take one of the gonadotropins away, LH, for example, and you flatten that out, you possibly slow down the aging of the brain. So anyway, this is in clinical trial. It's a phase two. So just as much as there's far more controversy over the, the negative effects, but there's also this small group of thinking that for a small subset of patients, and maybe it's just women, I don't know, that it could have some protective effects. And it's called the Lucinda trial. I'm just, I'm just throwing that in for controversy because there's another camp out there that seems convinced that suppressing LH and FSH seems to provide a benefit in some subsets of patients who are already on cognitive medications. Yeah. Well, that just goes to show, I mean, it, it, you know, again, it's analogous to the whole cardiovascular thing. You, yes. Wouldn't you think that if you took testosterone away from those guys who were hard driving and all that stuff and getting heart attacks, that they should have less cardiovascular problems? Yes, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's the same, it's the same thing all over again. So it is, but at least, at least it goes back to the, some of the Moyed mantras drink alcohol responsibly, get your rest, stay social, lose weight, stop smoking. Uh, exercise. <laughs> exercise, which we know affects the hippocampus, which is the memory area. So I right. appreciate you enlightening us about your research over the past 20 years in this, where we are with the novel antiandrogens. And I, I like your philosophy of being heart healthy is mind healthy and at least bringing up the awareness and yes. if there has to be an assessment, don't be scared to ask for an assessment. Right. Especially when you look over at the spouse or the significant other. <laughs> right. And see, see something's going on. Here's what I'm learning from you, Dr. Higano. This is it. Heart healthy is brain <laughs> cognition healthy. Thanks for your time in the wellness section. Okay. I'll see you soon. Yep. Sure thing, Mark. Have a good Thank one. Thank you. Bye okay. now. Bye-bye.